Welcome to another RC Worst video. Today we're going to show you the proper way to assemble a 4 inch submersible pump and motor. By following these simple steps, you can ensure a professional quality installation and save yourself time and money down the road. We're going to be using a Franklin Electric motor and an AY McDonald pump end, but the steps to assemble are virtually the same for all 4 inch pump and motor combinations. First, you're going to want to make sure that you inspect everything before you get to work. So what I mean by that is if you ordered this online or even picked it up in a local store, when you're unboxing the pump and motor, you want to make sure to inspect the packaging to make sure the packaging doesn't have any obvious damage to it. And uh, if it does, then I would report that damage to whomever you purchased it from. And uh, once you get everything unboxed, you'll want to take and look around and visually inspect the pump and motor for any wear and tear, any damage or dents. Uh, one area that's particularly important is to inspect the motor is uh, the lower portion of the motor and the upper portion of the motor are relatively tough, meaning that they can take uh, a reasonable amount of force and not be damaged. But this midsection of the motor is actually quite soft and can really easily be dented. So make sure that you inspect that for any dents or dings before installing because that can have a direct impact on the uh, motor winding. The second step you're going to want to do when assembling a pump and motor is to make sure that you've got the proper horsepower rated pump and motor configuration. So here we have a Franklin Electric motor and on this particular uh, brand Franklin Electric they have all of the information right here on the motor itself. So we can see that this is a half horsepower motor and AY McDonald, they do their information quite similar and though they do put it uh, down here towards the bottom and this has the model number of the pump. It is a 230V3MT and you've got an A1705J. So that tells us the 05J, we've got a half horsepower pump end. Another thing you'll want to make sure that you inspect when, with the motor is that you have the uh, proper number of wires that you intended to order. So there are of course two and three wire motors available. This particular one is a three wire motor. So it has uh, three plus a ground. There are two wire motors available as well. And uh, if you have a control box, undoubtedly you have a three wire motor. Additionally, you want to make sure that the voltage matches. This is a 230 volt motor, and uh, you want to make sure that that's the voltage that you intended to use. Uh, again, these inspection steps are somewhat obvious and can seem like just basic common sense, but it's especially important because these submersible pumps are installed so deep into the ground, they're not often easily accessible once installed. So taking a few extra seconds now, can really save you some time, money, and headache. Now before we begin the assembly process, we're going to go over the few pieces of equipment need to put the pump and motor together. So we've got our super lube. This is a synthetic grease that we're going to use on the shaft connection. We've got a couple of nut drivers, and then we've got just some lock washers and the appropriate size quarter inch nuts that are going to attach the motor to the pump in. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, remove the cable guard and the, uh, the inlet screen. Now before I do that, let me just talk for a moment about why so often these two components are shipped separately. Now by bolting these two together, what you're doing is inside of the bottom of the pump end is a shaft, or a shaft coupling, so to speak. And then on the top of the motor, we have the shaft itself. And uh, so this portion it inserts just slightly into the into that shaft coupling, and that's what rotates the pump. So the reason that I point out the shaft and the shaft coupling is when you ship them together, because the motor weighs so much more than the pump, is if, if uh, 
they're shipped together, oftentimes you can kind of get them to bend a little bit in the middle. And that bending causes some deflection inside the shaft and it, it, can, it can cause some permanent damage on the bearings and the internal workings of the pump if it gets bent too far. It's just not built to be able to withstand that kind of strain. So it's recommended that they ship separately so that you avoid any possibility of that occurring. So now I'll start removing the cable guard and the suction screen and we'll start the assembly process of the pump. Set those out of the way. And now this just pops off here. These can go come on here. Um, these can be attached in a number of different ways. But these ones just pop right off, kind of like uh, the button on a pair of Levi's. And that cable guard just comes right off like that. And the, the wiring inside the motor just runs along inside this cable guard because assumably if you've got a relatively tight diameter well, this is gonna be the thickest portion and is the most likely to rub up against the walls of the well. So this cable guard helps to protect the cable, which is relatively soft and easy to ding uh, from any of that occurring. So with the synthetic grease, you merely just need a very small amount about the size of a pea or so, and uh, that goes inside of the shaft. Just like so, we'll take and put that right in there. And that just helps to lubricate the shaft and then also protects it a little bit. What it protects it from is wear and tear associated with sediment and debris getting inside that small crevice. So. I'm going to stand the pump up, or the motor up, move the cords out of the way here, and the pump end, let's see, we've got to get, oh, you know, the one thing that I didn't mention, before I bolt these together, it's extremely important to mention this detail. Uh, you want to make sure that you rotate by hand the impellers on the pump side and the shaft on the motor side. What you're doing by uh, rotating both of those is ensuring that you don't have any problems right out of the box. This little device right here, if you're not familiar with this, is a, a sand slinger, or they call this a little rubber slinger. And what it does is essentially just fills that space of uh, between the shaft and where it goes into the pump coupling and helps to wick away any, uh, any sand or abrasives or sediment. Because as things are drawn into the pump's intake, everything comes in at this angle. So it would naturally just want to run and drive right into that shaft and just eat it to nothing. So they put that little slinger on there and things just kind of bounce off and go up. And you kind of got to rotate it to get it so that the splines of the shaft match up with the splines of the coupling. And then you can go around and set all your lock washers and then start installing all the nuts. And I'll just go hand tight on these for the first pass. And then I'll come through with my wrench and, and tighten them down. Now you'll need a half inch wrench to tighten these down. And don't be afraid to get it pretty tight. You certainly don't want the motor to fall off of there. <clears throat> I 
you don't really have to lock it in a vise or anything to tighten it up but about as tight as you can get it with just your just holding on to it with your other hand is is all the more you really need and those lock washers of course are what's going to be doing all the work of keeping these nuts on All right, I'm happy with that. So now we can apply that cable guard. So we've got the pump cable here and uh, we'll just kind of attempt to lay that relatively flat here, just like so. And that cable guard, there's these little kind of hook looking things that insert into the bottom of the pump here. And then pull that tight. Make sure our cables are flat or it won't work. There we go. There we go. So now we just need to replace these screws. Got the uh, the black one trying to get out there. Let's see if I can just pull it tight and get it to fit under there here. It's making a break for it. I'll just use the edge of this to push that in there. There we are. As we lost our intake screen, tighten these down pretty tight as well. And then that screen, it's kind of got this odd shape. So you've got this piece that just inserts underneath like so. just like so and now we've assembled a submersible well pump and motor